Welcome to J Square Talk AI, where we explore the world of AI and machine learning. This season, we are covering computer vision, uncovering its origins and the latest trends that are changing how machines see the world. Our sponsor is Ask UI, UI workflows that work seamlessly on every platform. Welcome to episode two of JJ Talk AI. This time we're talking about computer vision and again I have Johannes Hawks with me. Hey there. And when we're talking about computer vision, we also need an origin story, right? So what is computer vision and where does it come from, Johannes? So um, good question. Computer vision, as the name implies, is the research field or the, 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 the process of giving computers eyes, giving computers vision. In computer vision, we try to answer the question, how can I give computers the ability to understand concepts that are present in images? So for example, finding a person or describing the content of an image, these kinds of things. And interestingly, uh, in the 60s, I think 1966, around that time, people thought, okay, now let's just you know, solve this problem. We, we have computers now, now let's, let's teach them how to see and started a summer school with the goal to solve computer vision in the next few weeks. Like seriously, that, that was the idea. Um, <laughs> okay. And they quickly figured out that uh, this, is, this is not possible, right? Uh, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. And yeah, that's, that's why we're still doing computer vision. And that's why we need neural networks to, to do certain computer vision tasks for us because some things are a little more easier to solve in computer vision, but others are really, really complex and um, not necessarily intuitive for us as humans to implement. So when they started out in 1966, how did they start out? What are the classical approaches from that time and until now? Okay, so um, this this notion of, you know, explain to me what you're seeing, That's that was there right from the start. Now, the, the question is, what am I seeing, right? So for us as humans, that's obviously a, an intuitive thing to answer. I'm seeing the world around me in color and partly also in 3D. But for a machine, the usual input uh, that I would give it to, to show it something is pixels like in, in the vision context, like a series of numbers that are loosely correlated or strongly correlated in a two-dimensional sense. Now, how do I get information out of this? Right? If I just take the pure image, it's really just a bunch of, of numbers. Now I need to figure out how I can put those numbers into, into context. And one of the earliest and also most successful ways of doing that is by applying filters or using kernel methods to simply say, okay, I have, for example, a small patch that I say this looks like an edge for example, a border of something. And then I take this small sample and I slide it over the given image and ask at each stop I make while sliding it over the image, does this section of the image look like this small patch I have here? And then I get a yes or a no or something in between. And by doing this for the whole image, I can then say, okay, these parts in the image, they look similar to this little patch. And then I can define a number of patches that have different characteristics. This looks like a blob, this looks like an edge that's oriented 90 degrees to the other edge, these kinds of things. And then generate a bunch of feature maps that then can be used to explain the content of the image. For example, if I know where edges are, I can then say, okay, probably if I have connected edges, in, in an image, then the convex hull they, they built right, uh, will say that the inside of this hull is then one object. Or if I know how an eye looks, I can then say, okay, in this image at those locations probably are eyes, and then I can use this for face tracking and use, for example, the distance of the eyes to say, okay, this is a person that's close to the camera, etc. So I can I can use these kinds of features to already answer not only basic but interesting questions about the content of images. Let's remain at the eye example. You're not looking straight at the camera all the time. So we have some some things like tilt in one left or right or up and down. 
Yeah, so that's that's a really good point. And that's also one of the limitations of these kinds of approaches. I need to cover all possible scenarios with the corresponding filters to be able to yeah, say, for example, I'm looking from the side, I'm looking above these kinds of things. Though you have to say, like if you if you restrict it to only cover cases where I'm looking at the camera, which is you know, 80% of the time, for example, in a video call, then I'm totally fine with only a small number of filters that, that I can use to, to detect eyes. But the moment those filters don't activate anymore, I don't know where the eyes are, and then I need, for example, tracking methods to, to make predictions or to patch together data once the signal is coming back again with data from, or from, with signals from, from previously in, in the time. So yeah, that's, that's a problem. It also sounds like if you want to detect not only eyes, but a few things in an image, then you would need a lot of filters. That's true. Okay. And, and there are also ways to do this. For example, what I didn't mention here right now is scale, right? If I get closer to the camera, my eye is larger. So in terms of, of pixel space, the, the area my eye covers is larger. I need to compare it now to a differently sized patch, etc. And scaling patches is fairly easy, right? I can do this so I can cover multiple scales like this. If I want to detect edges of various orientations, I can just, you know, generate parametrically a number of filters for certain angles and so on and get more phi grain. So the, the question though is always, what kind of task do I want to solve? And what filters do I need for this task? Right? And that's, that's the interesting question. And that's why, for example, still today, face tracking is something that can be done very efficiently because I know very well how to do this with classical approaches. And those are then, of course, highly optimized. So you can do this in real time at literally no, no cost. It's basically what my camera is doing right now, tracking yeah. my face to True. not lose its focus. And it's blazingly fast. Yeah. yeah. I always also know, okay, so you have filters, but basically, do you have weights there? I know the concept of, of weights. So you, you're not using every filter in the same weight or weight the same. Is that a concept here? I mean, yeah, that's that's basically a post-processing step, I would guess. What you're referring to is now that I have information about the image, how do I, which information do I consider more valuable for the, for the given task at hand? But this concept of weights or this name is also used primarily in deep learning, right, where I have learnable parameters. And that I would say is, again, very similar, but in that sense, those weights are learned filters. So uh, depending on what you're getting at, like the, the term weight might, might define something different. So thanks for the explanation, Johannes. That's already the closing words for episode two. We might want to get into other methods like deep learning as the next evolutionary technology because as we discussed here the classical approaches are very good at solving a single task but they might get complicated when you have a lot of filters so stay tuned for the next episode <laughs>